afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the World of Discovery. This is the webinar series hosted by Discovery Hospitality. So today is an exciting day. We have very special guests from all around the world. Um, and uh, of course, uh, this is the third episode of this webinar series, and we're happy to introduce everybody uh, shortly. Uh, but before that, uh, I'm Kathy Napomuzeno, and of course, my co-moderator is Mr. Chris Yu. Hi, Chris. Hi, Kathy. Hi, everyone. Hi to all our viewers, all our guests. Good afternoon from the Philippines, and good morning to those in Europe. Um, World of Discovery is a webinar series that gathers key personalities across the what we can expect in every landscapes and see how we can adapt as business across on towards new opportunities. Okay. Yes. And for this particular episode, um, as companies take a long, hard look at budget allocations in the midst of the global pandemic, we've gathered Asia Pacific industry thought leaders uh, from leading tech firms, Google Philippines, Triptees, Sojourn, and our own marketing expert, of course, from the Discovery Group to share invaluable insights on travel's digital landscape. So, Chris, yes. maybe you can start with introducing our special guest. Of course, yeah. Thank you, everybody, to all our guests for being here. Uh, such a great honor to have um, you guys join us in this webinar. Let me start by introducing our first guest, Lina Ang, Sojourn's general manager of Asia Pacific. Leads a travel tech company's charge in turning travel into intent, tra turning travel intent into book stays. With over two decades of experience in the travel industry, she was recently named one of Campaign Asia's Women to Watch in 2019 as a difference maker in Asia Pacific marketing and communications. So Sojourn is uh, dedicated to bringing a distinct perspective to the programmatic advertising and digital marketing ecosystem through data-driven travel marketing and analyzing traveler pathways to purchase data. Sojourn is Discovery Hospitality's partner in driving direct booking from the overseas market. So welcome, Lina. Thanks for the introduction, Chris. Yay. And of course, our next guest is Moran, from the UK. Um, Daniel is Triptease's general manager, is a senior business leader with over 11 years of experience in Asia and Singapore um, and the Philippines, of course, and 15 years um, across marketing tech, analytics, specializing in digital marketing, fraud, payment, data quality, and social and loyalty solution. My God. So just for everyone's information, Triptease is geared towards helping hotels recapture guest relationships and increase direct bookings and their property. The platform seamlessly integrates a hotel site and booking engine to optimize conversion and improve price transparency. Triptease is Discovery Hospitality's partner in website engagement ensuring website lookers to convert into workers. All right. Thank you, Daniel. Welcome, Daniel. Happy to be here, guys. Thanks, guys. Great. Our next guest is Samuel Jambla, Google Maps' regional partner manager for North Asia and former market lead for Google Philippines, has been with Google for over six years, moving across different regions as his role has grown. Prior to joining Google, he also worked with and co-founded leading media and digital agencies around the world. So I guess everybody knows um, and uses Google. Google Philippines' marketing arm drives digital transformations across the country, working with top advertisers, media and creative agencies, and other organizations to show how digital platforms can help drive business growth, generate reach, and ignite customer engagement. Google is Discovery Hospitality's key traffic acquisition channel for growing its web visibility and direct bookings. So thank you for being with us, Samuel. We're looking forward to hearing from you. 
definitely the three are our partners in our digital marketing initiatives. And of course, last but not least, our very own Miss Blessy Towns. Miss Blessy is, is Discovery Hospitality Vice President and Head of Digital Marketing and Branding. Um, she is an Asia Pacific um, travel speaker with over 18 years of expertise in digital marketing. We're very proud of her. Nine years of which is of hotel um, marketing in particular. She is a founding member of Triptee's Hotel Heroes Council, a group of trusted experts sharing their expertise and knowledge with the aim of educating and empowering the hotel industry. Welcome, Ms. Blessy. Thanks, Kathy. Good Hi, afternoon, Ms. Blessy. everyone. Okay, Welcome. so before we begin um, today's uh, Q&A portion, I just want to remind everybody to please follow Discovery Hospitality Corp on Facebook to like and also to follow Discovery underscore Hospitality on Instagram. Okay, right. so let's get the episode rolling. Uh, let's uh, start with the easier questions um, first about the lockdown. Let's start with uh, Daniel, since uh, you were the first here. Uh, you are blessed you <laughs> who was here first so what have you been busy with during this lockdown and how how's how's it been so far oh look i think it's uh, i think it's been a challenging time for most um i uh had a uh, a new addition to the family back in february um so i've been dealing with a newborn and uh, two other uh children and trying to manage sort of work family life but outside of that i've been trying to learn to juggle and uh, and do a handstand um, oh, so we sort of, wow. as our team went into quarantine, we all tried to set ourselves with some tasks and, and things to learn. And um, yeah, I can say that I still cannot juggle, but my handstand is starting to progress. Um, oh. And I hope to have it mastered by the end of this quarantine. <laughs> well, having a newborn uh, just before the lockdown is, is, is um, uh, quite an interesting development. I mean, it's, it's, it's uh, definitely a huge blessing, but I mean, having to do to raise, uh, you said you had three kids, and in this the circumstance, it's just uh, must be very challenging for you. And now I understand yes, my, you're in my wife the is UK on a, now, right? <laughs> yes, I'm in the UK, so um, I decided to take a break to the UK and um, and try to, as you say, show off the newborn. And um, we realised that you hadn't actually met any other family, um, so we're here to kind of uh, introduce them to the grandparents um, and okay. sort of spend some time in the UK. But, but I'm normally so, based in Singapore. Congratulations on the newest addition Thanks. to your family. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Kathy, would you like to, to uh, proceed with the next question? Yeah. Well, yeah. does anyone want to also share, Miss Lena? Maybe you want to share what, yeah. what's been keeping you busy? Yeah. Sure. Nothing along the same line as Daniel, for sure. I think that's really challenging, uh, managing a new point. But first of all, I just wanted to take this opportunity to thank, the, uh, thank you, Discovery Hospitality, for hosting this webinar, which really allows us to share best practices and continue to keep the hospitality industry motivated, learning from each other as we ride through this pandemic, right? We're all in this together. So yes. alluding to uh, Chris's introduction, you know, at Sojourn, we collect travel data and give uh, access to real-time travel audiences and visibility into global travel demand. So what's been keeping me busy is that I've been working with the Insights team, you know, to, uh, who, to create uh, Sojourn's real-time COVID-19 uh, travel insight dashboard. So this dashboard actually helps to serve the travel industry and our customers uh, to give them daily travel insights to help hoteliers, attraction, tourism boards understand travel behaviors and plan for recovery. So, you know, we've been collecting a lot of feedback and also enhancing this report. Um, and in May, we've made it uh, available to everyone. We've made it public, you know, so that they have, people have access to this dashboard to understand what the travel trend for search and book like is like. So this can be found on, on our website. Oh, great. Thank you for that, Alina. Now, you talked okay. about uh, studying insights, you know, and I'll move on and lead, uh, make that a starting point for the next question. Maybe Samuel could uh, answer this or anybody could, could, um, could uh, add on later. Um, uh, can you tell us how the lockdown has changed the web users' media habits and content consumption, if any? Sure. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a really good question. Um, 
I mean, I'm sure everybody guesses that there has been some changes. Um, one of them, if you just look at you know, the Google's point of view, is the massive, massive rise in YouTube consumption. Uh, if you take yeah. a country like the Philippines, uh, a month after the start of the lockdown, um, we already had 18% more usage of YouTube, which is already a massive platform in the Philippines. So, you know, we believe that now people staying home uh, has definitely boosted the, uh, the, um, the viewership, but also the fact that people are looking for new things to learn and, um, you know, l learning to juggle or learning to take care of kids <laughs> are some of the, the few interests that people have and that they can learn on YouTube. So we've seen a whole locally made content in the Philippines, like uh, yoga classes in Tagalog, um, uh, self-awareness classes in Tagalog, uh, high intensity, high intensity training in Tagalog completely boom in, 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 on YouTube. And so definitely, if you ask me, you know, what has been the media change, definitely a shift towards more online video. Um, and you know, this is ex nihilo new, uh, new viewership. So people that instead of going to work, you actually spend more time watching videos, but it's also a shift from traditional media. So we did see a, a shift away from TV and more towards on-demand video uh, on, on online platforms. Um, one thing specific to the Philippines really has been the, the shutdown of ABS-CBN as well, which has kind of um, reached the landscape. Uh, so there are a lot of changes that the, the big winners are the online video platforms. Mm. Wow. Um, very interesting. I may direct this to Daniel, Lena, and, and Plessy. Uh, do web users still engage with the hotel brands despite the travel restrictions? And, and maybe I'll add about YouTube, since uh, Samuel mentioned about YouTube. How do you think um, hotel brands can, can take advantage of this growing use of YouTube? Who wants to start? Um, I can yes. think you know, you know that people are isolated indoors, uh, especially at the beginning of uh, this pandemic. And with that, many have actually, you know, as what Samuel mentioned, turned online and they're dreaming and planning for their next trip. And I'm specifically saying this in relation to uh, your question uh, regarding hotels, right? They are going online, they are looking, dreaming and planning their next trip. Um, that's why, and as Samuel shared as well, you know, we see that online traffic has exponentially gone, grown higher. Now, this is the time, you know, more than ever, people are surfing on the web to get inspiration. And therefore, mm -hmm. you know, um, more than ever, it is important for uh, online presence, hotels to have that online presence, right? And through our data, you know, we see that while uh, users are searching travels, um, even if it's for departure date at a later date, uh, we do see an increase in search activities based on the data that we're creating in Q4 end of this year and Q1 into uh, of next year. So we, we do see that, you know, it's picking up uh, across APEC, suggesting that travel is likely to pick up in the later months uh, with mm -hmm. a domestic focus first, then regionally, and then finally, you know, international will be a slow one, but, you know, that's, uh, it will take time to recover there. At least they're looking for inspiration, right? <laughs> yes. Blessy, do you want to add to that? Um, for the discovery group, um, yes, website users still engage with their brands despite the um, travel restrictions. Um, like all other brands, our website traffic has declined versus last year. But it's inspiring to see that, like for one of our properties, as an example, we have served over 53,000 users since start of the lockdown. Most of these users are researching about weddings, future stay, book direct offers. On social media, we've been busy helping our followers recreate our signature brand experiences and also do video marketing. So post reach for some of our brands went as high as 329%. New likes increased by 60%. Post engagement by 194% in the past 28 days versus same period. So quietly, we are very busy. Actually, yes, we are. Yes, uh, Daniel, would you like to add? Yeah, sure. Oh, Look, I'm, I'll, I'll share some, uh, some data that um, that we also sort of have collated from all our hotels across the globe. But I think it varies by country. Um, but this is kind of a, a look at 
all the, um, I'm not too sure if you can see my screen, hopefully you can, but the, the sort of search engagement, but not just the sort of website visitors, but actually how many searches are appearing on, um, on some hoteliers websites. I think it, it, it's sort of, you know, tough to see a sort of trend because some countries, the UK, Malaysia, is kind of back to sort of, you know, pre-COVID levels. But obviously, you know, the Philippines were starting to start to see an uptick, but I think it's been hit pretty hard. Um, and Singapore, you know, we still haven't seen that rise due to the sort of um, the, the COVID and the sort of quarantine that's happening. So I think it depends on what country you're based in and what sort of data um, restrictions, sorry, what sort of quarantine restrictions you have. Um, but as an idea, sort of in Europe, there's sort of a, a big opening about to happen with travel corridors. So we expect a lot of these graphs to start to, uh, to jump up even more. But I think it's good news that people are still looking uh, for that vacation and they're still sort of planning ahead. I certainly am. Uh, looking forward to the next big holiday and I think that's a, a trend that will continue and I, I think sort of speaking to some Philippine hotels what we noticed is I think when uh, there was a, a sort of quarantine break in a, a destination they went from 20% occupancy to you know 95% occupancy within three days so I think as soon as these uh, restrictions lay up then people are going to be jumping in to, uh, to book those hotels. Yeah I guess that that's uh full proof that everyone is indeed online and trying to figure out what their future plans are. Right, Chris? Yeah. Uh, but Daniel, do you see that the trend across um, which uh, market segment? Is it, is it similar for all or would it be more on the, the upper uh, uh, segment, the higher high income bracket? Because I guess they have the propensity to spend. How about those who may have um, had uh, um, salary cuts or have lost their jobs? Yeah, so we're definitely seeing, yeah, definitely we're definitely trend. seeing a more sort of leisure um, hotel uptake rather than mm -hmm. the, the business mm -hmm. hotel uptake, um, which I think is going to be probably a common theme. Uh, I suppose kind of the city hotels are having to sort of change their focus, as you say, offering um, you know, family reunions, um, you know, business uh, office hours and allowing people to work remotely from those uh, destinations. But I think kind of the uptakes that we're seeing first is definitely more just sort of people trying to get away and sort of, you know, step outside their house and find that leisure mm. destination. So the resort and uh, out of town, I think, delivering. I think we'll also sort of see a big uptake in the more remote destinations as people start to travel to um, sort of further, you know, you know, by road, et cetera, and try and sort of find the new destinations that they haven't previously had to get to by the airplane. So that's certainly something we're starting to see as well. Okay. Thank you. Interesting. Chris, do you want to? Yep. Okay. So if this is for uh, anybody, feel free to answer. Uh, if you could choose, if you could only choose five marketing channels or touch points to drive bookings, what would your best five be? I, I, I'm jumping a little bit. I'm going to the, the future of travel and how you would, um, how you foresee it. So, um, uh, who would like to start? Maybe Samuel? Sure. I mean, you're, you're, you're handing me the baby here. I mean, definitely um, with the data we've just seen, a search remains one of the key channels for hotel bookings. Um, it's, no, uh, it's no secret that the uh, OTA players are one of the, the most active on search, and they are because Search is just a channel that converts extremely well. You're talking to people that have high intent of conversion to begin with. So if I'm searching for a trip on Google, you know, I'm probably thinking of booking a trip in the next few days, right? So the mm. intent that you're having on a platform like Google is absolutely massive, uh, okay. especially in the travel uh, vertical where the amount of searches before someone actually books the trip is extremely high and it refines along the way. So mm -hmm. if you're able to be on the lower funnel keywords, yeah. people saying, you know, book a hotel in Maldives. Well, you know, you know through the Google search that they're looking to book a hotel in the Maldives. So there's no question that you have to be there for them if you are a hotel chain in the Maldives, right? So the, the intent on search is just so high that for me, this is the, the number one channel that you should focus on. However, in the spirit of pandemic and you know, people staying at home and travel being very complicated, um, you know, I would double down to what has been said before, which is people are, are looking for inspiration and they're looking to escape through digital channels. So one of the key uh, new type of contents we've seen on YouTube 
is 24 hours of a field with sheep eating the grass. And people would just watch that video forever. And what wow. do they want to see? They want to see nature. They want to fly out of their apartment. And so there's just one video shot in Napa Valley that has millions of views. It's basically sheep you know, grazing in, in the fields of Napa Valley. And people do that because they want to escape and they also want to get inspiration. And this is definitely a trend that's new, but that we also see as sustain in, in, in time. So even when the pandemic is over, I believe that people are developing those new behaviors where they really see digital as just uh, an additional uh, value channel to them. And you know you don't need to pay expensive uh, plane tickets to, uh, to just escape for a few hours. You can just watch a video or have an immersive experience. So definitely a trend that we're seeing. So what does this mean for the hospitality industry? It means that you know, if you have a beautiful hotel in a beautiful location, you have to be ready to create content that will inspire people, relax mm -hmm. people. And you know, to really understand what type of content you have to create, you first have to understand your audience really well. So one of the things you could do definitely is survey your past customers, try to understand what are people looking for uh, right now? What is, who are the people usually coming to my hotel? And what type of content would they like to see? Mm. And I think that's the first step to creating great content and you know, being on platforms like YouTube, which I think is a great uh, underused platform for the hospitality industry today. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. Very insightful. I, I haven't had a chance to, uh, to watch one of those uh, videos where you watch the sheeps for 24 hours. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know Relaxing, I right? <laughs> to watch sheeps all day. <laughs> sure. I mean, you know, it's sheeps. <laughs> If you're Filipino, you can film the waves or film yeah. Batanes, right? I wouldn't mind having a video of Batanes in my living room on TV uh -huh. for 24 hours because this is wonderful. It can be a beach, it can be the beautiful mountains of Baguio. Uh -huh. So wherever you are in the world, there is beauty outside and people want to see it today, especially in tough times. So it's definitely a call to power hotel owners and the hospitality industry to so start thinking what are people looking in terms and of these are content? current videos current videos i mean yeah. so during the lock taken during uh the covid i mean the lockdown period um so or some were necessarily. posted before and they just got a lot of uh, attraction and viewership during the lockdown uh, some were actually shot by by people definitely mm. i mean i'll give you another example of the type of content that's working right now there is this um this poultry farmer in the Philippines, his name is Dwight Toyato or Toya, Toyamo, if I remember correctly. He has, he went from zero to 50,000 subscribers in a matter of months. And what he does is he just you know, describes and films his life as a poultry farmer. And he's getting massive viewership at the moment because people want to escape in the provinces, uh, want to see how people are living the life out there. And, uh, and his content is, is booming at the moment. So he just wow. got featured on a bunch of magazines in the Philippines. And he literally films him growing chickens, filmed his garden, films his daily life. And people are taking a lot of interest in this. And do you think that has translated to an uh, increase in his sales? For him? I mean, yeah. he was in the, in the cover of Agriculture Magazine of the Philippines. I mean, from a poultry farmer in... I don't know, Kagayan de Oro to being on the cover of a magazine. I mean, you know, that's great, right? That's fantastic for him. So definitely YouTube is a business channel. Uh, mm. In history, there's no question there. Yeah, very interesting. Yeah, interesting. Um, you know, just to follow up on, on what um, Samuel mentioned about budget, maybe the others can address this. I always ask this question to Leslie, actually. Um, how do you determine what's enough budget for the upper and the lower sales funnel uh you know especially now you know uh, a lot of budgets have been cut um but of course we we still have to allocate the right amount to get the optimum results right mm -hmm. how do you determine that lina i was trying to find my to try to unmute myself yes yeah you know, um, I think, Katie, there's no uh, cookie-cutter approach here. Uh -huh. So it really depends. You know, if you have a limited budget and the focus is to, you know, think about driving conversion, then certainly it's the lower funnel approach and activities that the focus should be, you know, on. 
However, you know, one should not forget that the upper funnel activities are the one that is also important in identifying prospects that are traveling into that destination, for example. That's so, right. you know, which will also in the end uh, fuel the audience for your lower funnel activities as well. So I think it's about finding that balance. How much is it already on your, your existing website and how much, where do you actually need that help? Is it upper funnel or lower funnel and craft your strategy accordingly? If I may answer, um, I'd say it's ideal that you retain your presence in the customer journey. Remember, I always say out of sight, out of mind. Right. And we're talking about, you know, inspiration, research, planning, and booking, and now validation as another important part of the journey. So there's no perfect conversion path. So you have to be there across all stages to assist conversion. And if your budget is not enough to cover all stages, I'd say, work with direct booking suppliers on cost per action basis or pay commission based on materialized bookings. For in-house campaigns, I would recommend allocating 30% of your budget on targeted awareness and then the rest towards the lower sales funnel because that's where the money is. Yeah, I think I echo uh, Blessie's, uh, Blessie, Blessie's view is, um, is yeah, the demand gen is where you would uh, want to focus your, your budget. I think in terms of the channels, it's the, it's the channels that are gonna drive um, traction and certainly bookers so you know things like meta utilizing your crm your loyalty programs utilizing people who are actually visiting your website um, to me that's where you're going to get the the easy quick wins i think in a world where budgets are being cut you need to do um you know a lot more with a lot less uh, you just mm. really need to focus on your roas um, and to me you know that is just being very strict and if i'm not seeing a return for that marketing spend then you're going to have to find somewhere else to invest that um, so if that means sort of you know shifting into to the meta world or sort of you know fully on to uh, just the lower end of the funnel, then that to me is where I'd be um, looking to focus my attention to try and drive the the bookings that you can at the moment, or at least sort of uh, ensure that you're ready for that uptake when it starts to happen. Mm. It's a right balance, I guess. Yeah. And the good thing I think is that now we have the statistics to to back that up and identify um, which part of the market is really driving the sales you know, with right. the tools that, that are available nowadays. Um, so now let's talk about uh, website engagement. Maybe Daniel and Blessy could answer this. Um, so what should hotels do to make sure that they convert the website visits into actual bookings? Any tips maybe? Because now it's so easy to just jump from one website to another. Uh, what would be... Uh, maybe a, a tip or advice that would be able to convert that view into a, an actual booking? Ladies first. Maybe. Okay. Um, uh, user experience and website usability are a given. I think that we hoteliers should understand. What we have to understand is that the website is not just a brochure or an online presence. It plays a crucial role in converting lookers into bookers. In one of my Asia Pacific conferences last year, I said, you cannot have the traffic acquisition strategy of a Ferrari with the engagement strategy of a Kia. Mm -hmm. It means that if we are that strategic in driving website traffic, we also have to be strategic about how we engage users once they reach the website and ensure that they book. So we have to be able to address hesitation points when they go to the website. We have to prominently display the, on the site that we are strictly implementing our health and safety protocol. Um, more than ever, we have to be able to communicate our culture of care and make visitors feel reassured that we will care for them when they stay with us. We also have to identify um, those pages with high bounce rate and come up with messaging that will address exit intent or in simple terms, stop them when they're about to leave the website. Mm. So this could be your special offer, your health and safety um, protocol, a loyalty reward. And then to avoid guest complaints, make sure your terms and conditions and web pages reflect the new normal. And lastly, to entice the guests, I'd say consider waiving cancellation and rebooking. Mm. Okay. Right, that's very relevant nowadays. Right. It's almost expected from all industries to to show that flexibility and it's it's readily available in the website Daniel? Um, I, think, yeah, I think the only thing i'll add is um is uh, look i think personalization as bless is talking about there is is absolutely key um mm -hmm. so what you're going to be doing and how you're going to be enticing people to, to book on your website 
the only other thing that I think I'll share is just what we've also seen is a shift in actual traffic. So what device that people are viewing on. Um, so sort of pre-COVID, we saw a lot more sort of, you know, desktop um, viewing of the hotel world. Whereas mm -hmm. I think we've sort of seen to a world where actually now mobile has started to already start to, to overtake the desktop. Mm. So what that means is you have to be optimized for that mobile experience. Um, you know, the, the recommendation I'd have is, you know, load up your hotel's booking journey on your mobile, run through a booking as if you're a customer. You know, how long is it taking? Is it two minutes? Um, you know, is that too long? How many people have dropped off through that process? How is it being displayed? Um, you know, Google provides some great free tools to look at your mobile responsiveness or find a partner that actually, you know, is able to offer sort of a, um, uh, you know, a mobile optimization um, process. So at Tripsy, what we've done during this time, we've sort of started to offer uh, the ability, um, you know, the, the flow through your mobile uh, experience that's, you know, very quick, very easy, uh, minimal friction, just to ensure that when people are looking for those hotels, that, you know, you're coming up in the right manner and they're not getting uh, frustrated with that engagement. Oh. It's interesting. Thank you. Thank you. The, the Philippines um, desktop is still higher <laughs> than mobile, right? But nevertheless, I think the the convenience of having it optimized in the mobile version is, is still. Yeah. Key, Look right? at South Korea. Look at South Korea. Mobile is well, yeah. It's, yeah. It's way ahead of the desktop. Yeah. So it, it it sort of starts to vary, but I think you can start to see that. Yeah, when the uptake happens, uh, um, and it will do, I think it's just a time lag. So, you know, as, as we said earlier, some countries are coming out of quarantine, some people are relaxing it. I think that's when we'll start to see sort of the, uh, the shift and the dynamic change. And it's just if the Philippines follows similar trends for the rest of the globe, then I think we'll hopefully expect to see, um, or we won't, we'll, we'll see mobile start to take on a lot more traction in the, in the world. Mm -hmm. Except if you have bad eyes. <laughs> it's difficult yeah. to do a mobile booking, yeah. mainly because of my eyesight. <laughs> yeah, right. or, uh, or or slow data um, from the internet provider. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Okay. Moving on. Let's let's um, look at you know obviously for the Philippines, um, everybody knows that. Um, we see that domestic, the domestic market is really uh, somehow the only market that we can sort of really rely on in the next few months, right? But aside from the local travelers, um, what are the, the geo markets that you see uh, that are somehow going to uh, uh, show potential for the Philippine hotels? I think this will be, we have a lot of hoteliers uh, that are watching today. Um, I think we're, we're all set for the domestic market, but preparing for um, the international market, which is a very important part of our business. Uh, what do you think should, uh, what are the geo markets that we should prioritize on? And when, and when do you expect them to yes, that's <laughs> start right. coming back? Very important. <laughs> Lena? Who wants to start? Ms. Lena? Lena? I'm muting again. Yeah. So I, I think when we look at the, our data, we, sh we saw that, you know, in terms of search activities, uh, it was a very interesting trend that, you know, if they were, were uh, looking to book, it was booking for a very near term um, travel. So meaning to say, it's always like for almost the next month. So if, for example, in June, if the, the search happened in June, it was, you know, uh, for bookings that were in July. Mm -hmm. And what we saw was, uh, you know, uh, domestic still holds a large part for, uh, out for the Philippines. I think it's about, it was about 30%-ish. And it was interesting to note that, you know, countries like uh, UAE was about 20%, Singapore and Saudi Arabia was like 10%. So, you know, uh, in, in saying that, you know, the source market, right, traveling, well, we noticed that during lockdown, it may not represent travelers. 
it may just simply be you know people returning home for example yeah. because of the restrictions in place and all that people are not going to go into a country and have a go through isolation for x number of days right so that's what we were seeing but on the positive side as i've shared with you earlier we are seeing more of uh, bookings the searches are uh, happening around december we saw a spike in terms of a uh, number of searches in december mm -hmm. specifically for philippines huh? and then the booking um two spikes actually one in um, may uh, one in February 2021 and March 2021 as well. So that's the upside of the, the story I can share here. Okay. Daniel, anything to add? Uh, I suppose it's, it's very difficult to know what the, uh, the Philippine government's going to, uh, to do and how the sort of quarantine restrictions are going to open up. Um, I think the only thing I can say is it, it's more about being ready uh, for the uplift. So, you know, if they open up the Korea travel corridor, um, you know, how are you going to entice those Korean guests to, to book on your website? What, what messages, what personalization do you have ready for a Korean visitor? Um, so it, it's more about being able to respond in a quick manner, I think is important, rather than trying to predict what is going to open up because it, it's just such an unknown. Mm. Um, you know, even in, in Singapore, we just don't really know where those travelers are going to come from. But what we can say, it's more about being prepared to be ready. Um, but then, you know, how often do you do sort of some website analytics and some data health checks to look at where are my visitors coming from? Okay. You know, out of all my traffic this week, what are the destinations that, that people are sort of seeming to be coming in from? And how can I entice some offers to ensure that they uh, convert into bookers? So, so to me, it, it's more about the analysis of that data and trying to sort of be able to be responsive for when that uptake does happen. Um, obviously, I do hope that it's sooner rather than later. Mm. Yes, we're all hoping for that. <laughs> I guess it's crucial to also look at your historical data um, of each property and, and see if those particular markets are likely with all the restrictions, several you know, different government um, uh, mandates and all that. So it, it's good to do the, the back end uh, and, and look at your historical data as well. So this Sam is a question yeah. for, for Samuel. Oh, sorry, Samuel, Chris, yeah. you want no, to? No, I was, I, was, I was also looking for a question for Samuel. He's been quiet for a while. Yeah, <laughs> um, actually, very interesting because you know, everybody says, Google it, right? I, 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 told, I, I, I tell that to my sons all the time. When they ask me a question, I always say, Google it. Um, yes, in I was, terms uh, of, yeah. Yes, go ahead, Chris. No, I was looking at the, probably the same question as you, no number question, 14. Right? Yeah, yes. to Samuel, are there any trends or breakouts in terms of keyword searches? And what should hotels optimize for? And would you have any um, maybe recommended services that Google could, could uh, perhaps provide to hoteliers or uh, other uh, practitioners in the industry that they can take advantage of? Maybe you want to, to share that? Mm, sure. Um, so, I, you know, maybe people in this call are familiar with Google Trends, which is really the Bible that I would recommend everybody to use. Um, just look for something like hotels and look for the top rising and uh, top keywords at the bottom of the report that you'll get. And then you probably have a pretty good idea of what people are looking for. Um, but some key trends to definitely look into, um, you know, the first one is, is safety and it will impact every single business, the ability to showcase that your business, whatever it is, a hotel or a restaurant, really prioritizes safety of travelers um, is going to be a, a key priority, right? So it's not just about doing it. Um, so, you know, ensuring proper distancing, having the proper cleaning in place, but it's making sure that you showcase it in all of the mm. other So definitely... Right, right. Mm. In search ads, being YouTube ads, display ads, remarketing, whatever you're doing on our platforms, make sure that you feature the, proactively whatever you're doing to make sure that those travelers are safe. The second trend that you should definitely look into is the rise of, um, with, with the rise of work from home, is people wanting to work from somewhere else in the world. And there will definitely be, it was already a growing industry pre-COVID, but this a pandemic has accelerated that trend, which is people are gonna, you know, go from one hotel to the next, and because their work is gonna be completely uh, office-less, they'll be able to do this for a long period of time. So, how can you cater for those specific travelers as well, right? Uh, someone who's an IT consultant, someone who's a Googler, maybe, would like to stay in your hotel for a week. 
and work mm. from that hotel and enjoy the activities that you can also offer. And I, mm. I'm speaking out of the trends that we're seeing, but also out of experience. I have a number of colleagues that are working from places that are not their home and not the place where they're actually working either. Uh, so definitely a big market to address there. And then finally, I think with the, you know, people first being more cautious with their spend and you know, looking for safer places as well, there's going to be a lot more pre-work that's going to be done. So people are going to research a lot before they actually book. So the conversion time between you know, the first search or the first intent all the way to the conversion is probably going to be a bit longer. And I do believe that you know, hotels that are able to showcase really well how nice and how safe and how beautiful the, their place is are going to be the, the, winning, the winning ones there. Um, there's probably going to be a lot of pressure on prices. So definitely you want to differentiate yourself with all the key features and beautiful features that you have. Um, so, you know, look at things like um, definitely Google My Business is a tool that I hope everybody in this school is using. It's free, very easy to set up displays, pictures, phone numbers, websites of, of your, your hotel. Um, and try looking at things like, um, you know, how can you use uh, features like Street View or 360 uh, uh, overview of your hotel to make sure that people can really make an educated uh, mm. purchase decision so that they are able to see the hotel, see the safety measures, see yeah. the potential distancing that can exist in your place. And to do this, you need to give them an immersive experience. So definitely working on that immersive experience is going to be a key part of the sales process once travel restrictions are lifted. I see. So the 360 degree view apparently is uh, is um, important, very important. Of it course, doesn't. It, more than it, really the, the, yeah, it, really it doesn't take out the element of surprise if you're if you're showing them pretty much everything that they they'll see when they physically enter the the room or the hotel. Oh well, you don't want to in in a post pandemic world, you don't want to surprise anyone, right? That's <laughs> you don't want to surprise a good one or a bad one. Believe me, people are not mm. going to be those surprises. They want something that's reliable, that's safe, that will not cause them any headaches or trouble. Um, so you need to, actually, it's better to show more than to okay. show less. Um, I think that would be a, a good nice. tip to follow. Great, great. Interesting, yeah. Very good. Um, can I direct this question to Lena and, and, and Daniel in particular? Mm -hmm. um, I know Sojourn and, and Triptis, offers risk-free marketing or in other words, hotels will only pay commission based on materialized booking, right? Yes. So could you tell us how it works uh, for the benefit of the other, uh, for the viewers and the listeners, how it works and how hotels can, and can truly benefit from this? We certainly do. So we'd like to share that information to everyone. Sure. So um, Daniel, if you don't mind, I'll start first. Go ahead, go ahead, Lena. No problem. Go ahead, yeah, yeah, go ahead, go ahead Lena. Okay, so um, absolutely right. So, you know, I want to share that in June, actually, we broke our global outstanding global record, which we saw over 360 hotels sign up in one single month on this model. And this model is known as pay on the stay. So, you know, globally, we have about 7,000 hotels on this model, and we've been running this uh, pay on the stay commission model for uh, over seven years now. So how does it work? It's really simple actually. So Sojourn would set up a campaign including creative banners that's at no additional, up, that's of no upfront cost to uh, the hotel. The campaign strategy consists of prospecting, you know, that's upper funnel and then retargeting at the lower funnel. And uh, we leverage, you know, as uh, Chris uh, shared in, during the introduction uh, on Sojourn that we leverage the int travel intent signals uh, to advertise to a traveler who has shown travel in, uh, intent to travel to a specific destination. So for example, I'll give you an example. You know, if a, uh, if a traveler went on a, one of our data partner websites, say to either search or book uh, a ticket or a hotel, in 11 seconds, we pulled that intent signal and were able to know this person has just demonstrated uh, interest to visit um, Manila and we'll show them a hotel in Manila and of course there's a lot of other algorithms in place and uh, you know artificial intelligence in place to understand the propensity of this individual to buy you know which category mm. of hotels etc as well now the benefits here include that you know as Katie mentioned commissions so it is uh, based on a co commission model where 
uh, we only collect uh, X percent of uh, commission when the guests check out. So that we don't, we do not collect commission if it's uh, a cancelled booking or a booking mm -hmm. that's a no show. So this is really good cash flow. As you can imagine, yeah. cash flow is king today, right? Um, mm -hmm. For any business. Um, so the, the hotel benefits from that. And in addition, you know, with this model, uh, with, so we started with display. Now we've added social media. So you get Facebook, Instagram, you get SEM, you get Meta on this model as well. Now we do, the, you know, we do require a hotel to meet a certain criteria, you know, in terms of minimum ADR, room count, and a fair management of their online rates in order to activate them on this uh, model um, and select the channels as well. Nice. Very nice. Thank you. Uh, over to you, Daniel. Yeah, look, um, I would say it's, it's, it's very similar um, to, to, oh, yeah, sorry. Um, I would say it's very similar to, uh, to what Lena was talking about uh, is the, the trip to offering as well. I suppose the, the sort of point of uh, differentiation is we would, work a lot more with our parity data. Um, so Triptease is all about price parity and showing the ads when they're, when they're most relevant, when we know that you're not being undercut by the OTAs. Yeah. So by ensuring that we're only sort of displaying an ad when we know that you've got a better price than the OTA, we can help to ensure that you get a very strong um, return on that investment. In terms of a uh, sort of commission model, bill on checkout, um, all very similar to make sure that you know, you know cash is kept in the organization and ensure that we see that we can drive results to the, um, the you, know, you think that you've obviously sort of still keep on your OTA partnerships and expect them to sort of drive bookings to your, to your business. Well, why not work with a, a direct technology partner that can do something very similar and utilize your existing assets and actually allow you to own that data at a, uh, at a similar commission model. So that to me is kind of the, the real power of sort of direct bookings and what you're able to, um, to leverage. I think the only other sort of point of um, uh, differentiation I'd like to sort of talk about is our mobile express technology. So we built the ability to enable um, you know, any hotel to, to drive a mobile booking experience and we sit on top of your booking engine rather than allowing you to have to replace that. So what that really means is that we can start to drive um, a hotel conversion through a mobile booking experience in you know, less than 20 seconds and optimize sort of page responsiveness and um, load speeds and actually sort of the frictionless journey. So that's something I would certainly encourage you guys to, uh, to have a look at as well. Mm -hmm. cool. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. Yeah, do we still have time, Kathy? Uh, yes, we still have about 10 minutes. 10 minutes. Yes. Okay. Um, I'm happy to, uh, to share, some, uh, to share a, um, just another chart that could be of interest, um, just to have a look at some of what we're seeing in terms of the lead times, as well okay. as um, we've also got some actual kind of uh, direct booking volumes by country as well, if you'd like. Yeah. Sure. Sure. That would be, that would be wonderful. So I just think these, uh, I'll just share with you sort of two more sort of um, proof points that we're seeing in terms of that recovery. So this is a, a, a sort of chart that just helps you to understand, well, how do lead times compare? Um, so, you know, I think at the beginning of the, um, uh, the crisis, everyone was sort of looking a lot further out. But I think now as the world is starting to, to react and make plans, you can actually start to see that the sort of uh, short lead times are actually starting to, to make a sort of massive jump. So that when, uh, you know, quarantine restrictions are lifted, People are, are kind of very anxious to go, right, it's safe, let's move out, let's try and do something. Or, you know, look, I really need a break. It's been four months indoors, let's, um, let, let's try and find somewhere else to, to work. So that to me is a, a trend that will also start to continue. Um, I think from a, uh, another sort of big trend, it's obviously fairly easy to understand why, but the domestic versus international travelers. Um, so, you know, for me, this is something that uh, every hotel needs to be able to leverage. You know, whether it's those um, you know, workers looking to, to work somewhere else, whether it's just the, the family reunions, whether it's just people trying to get a, a weekend getaway. You know, I think sort of uh, the domestic market is only going to be one of the earliest signs of recovery to any market and what that looks like. Yeah. 
so that was uh, that was to me the sort of the, the sort of important sort of data points. I think you can see here from the the APAC countries. Um, yeah, you've got a lot of it. Like you know, Australia is looking very strong from a, a direct mm -hmm. booking percentage, as well as their kind of domestic versus international. Yeah, I don't think Australia are looking for any visitors till the end of the year. So you know, they've now got to sort of completely turn their strategy to how do we sort of um, uh, monetize our domestic visitors. China, I guess, is a combination of domestic and international. Yes. I'll share the data and the graphs, um, so hopefully they'll, they'll be available for download, but they're, they're always available on the, uh, the, the Triptease website, um, and, and certainly sort of encourage people to have a look there as well. Okay, fantastic. Great, great reports. <laughs> um, Blessy. Hey, let's not forget our very own blessing. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, well, we all know that we, we work with Sojourn, right? And, but at the same time, we, we also run our own digital uh, marketing campaigns in-house. Um, is this an ideal setup for hotels? Or, um, and how, how do you maximize? Uh, what do you do in-house? to maximize this on the end with the partnership, of course, with Sojourn. Yes, um, our in-house campaigns target local travelers. Sojourn helps us target users from geofeeder market. Last I heard, we're the only Sojourn client with this kind of arrangement, right, Lena? I know, we have to mute this now. <laughs> <laughs> Very special treatment. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, just a brief background. We established the digital marketing de department um, of Discovery Hospitality in Q4 of 2014 and started our digital transformation um, the following year. Um, in house, we achieved 100% growth in terms of direct booking revenue for two consecutive years and saw consistent growth year on year. So talking about Book Direct, in 2019, we even outperformed the OTAs with 37% mm -hmm. share of revenue versus OTAs 24%. So that's 2.9% wow. lift of revenue for OTAs versus previous year compared to our 21% growth. Well, that's for Discovery Hospitality. Our ROI is also higher versus the online travel agents trees to one um, and with other Book Direct suppliers. The highest um, for APAC, in terms of ROI guarantee that I've seen so far, um, which uses a really sophisticated AI-powered campaign is 50 to 1. The highest for Discovery Hospitality historically is at um, 130 to 1. Now, to answer your question, it's ideal if you have in-house expertise. It's fairly easy to run digital campaigns nowadays, but to ensure that those campaigns are performing a reasonable return on ad spend and return on investment takes expertise. In addition, machine learning and artificial intelligence are vital to survive this pandemic. So if you're not yet using these technologies or doing programmatic advertising, then it's time to outsource or work with a partner. Oh, okay. Huh? And why don't you plug your, um, what Discovery Hospitality can do for um, other establishments, um, not necessarily in the hotel industry, right? Uh, why don't you talk a little bit about that, Leslie? Um, if you need help launching your campaigns that convert into bookings, digital um, Discovery Hospitality now offers shared services which include digital marketing. We do pay-per-click advertising which consists of search, banner, or display, and your marketing. We can also help you rank on Google search for your target keywords. Um, we do social media marketing to deliver brand love and conversion for your property and of course CRM and email marketing for revenue and relationship management. So. Um, Discovery Hospitality is not their traditional di digital agency. We don't just run ads. Um, we do performance marketing. Um, right. Campaigns convert. That's our USP. Okay, great. So for maybe companies that don't have the budget to set up an in-house uh, marketing team, this is a possibility that they could explore, you know, engaging your services and expertise to beef up their, this, uh, this side of the business. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. I, I would like to just add, add to that. Yep. Sorry, if, um, if the companies or other um, properties would like to book for a one-on-one -on -one consultation, they could just send us a message on Facebook right. or IG. 
How about non-hotels, for example, let's say restaurants or other brands? Are you open to that as well? Yeah, sure. Of course. Definitely. Okay. Yeah, I just like to add that, you know, I think that's really great. And I think where, um, you know, performance marketing uh, agents find value in partnering Sojourn is because they can leverage their data intent that we gather um, to, to make it an even, even more robust, uh, you know, uh, targeting strategy. So, you know, that's why you continue to uh, partner discovery to drive that performance marketing activities. Exactly. It's a win-win partnership. Totally. Yeah. Okay, Kathy, maybe you want to wrap up and maybe have everybody yeah. to say some final words. That's right. Um, before we wrap up, maybe we can ask one last question. Okay, sure. For, for everybody. And before that last question, um, I just want to invite everyone. Um, this webinar series is every two weeks. Uh, so our next will be on July 14th the day before Chris's birthday. <laughs> uh, and it's going to be on sustainability. So for all the, the our friends and our clients who are listening in, uh, please do look forward to that. Uh, it's gonna be an interesting topic as well. And as what uh, Chris mentioned earlier, if you, you'd like to follow us, um, please follow us at, at Discovery Hospitality Corp on Facebook and at discovery underscore hospitality on Instagram. So the last question for everyone, I guess, is, um, you know, during this whole pandemic, and I think we're all doing the same thing, we're, we've been reading a lot of materials and attending a lot of webinars because information is key, really. Um, this pandemic is really something that really caught us off guard. We don't know what the future lies, really. Um, what are your key takeaways? Because um, there's, there's just so much information there. What are your key takeaways that uh, you can share, um, particularly for hoteliers? Maybe Lena can start, ladies first. <laughs> Thank you. You know, I was going to pass it on to Blessy because she yes, invited that's me right. on this uh, webinar. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. You know, I think during this pandemic uh, and, and lockdown, I would recommend, I think key takeaways here would be use, use current data because, you know, what may work for you historically may not work for some businesses. For example, if you are a MICE uh, meeting, you know, uh, venue, you know, and trying to target that may not help you immediately uh, yeah. to recover, for example. So you make use of current data to get you to make informed decisions of your strategy. Um, and, and given, you know, we've shared, we, we've heard over this hour how um, online traffic has grown exponentially, just ensure that, you know, you're, you're there online, consumer behaviors are shifting online, um, so that, you know, you make sure that you have a strategy in place from a hotel's pers perspective, for example, make sure you're set up to capture, you know, buying signals and drive them to convert online. Bye. That's all I have. Okay, nice. Thank you, Lina. Um, bless you. Yes, um, I've been reading and hearing a lot about revenge travel, and it's nice if it would happen soon. But then with DOT survey saying that majority of domestic leisure travelers will wait 6 to 12 months to travel again, I believe that validation from the authorities are very important. Guarantee from the industry that their health and safety measures are observed consistently is, well, equally important. But, you know, I think most of all, it's the social proof that can activate the bandwagon effect. In social psychology and in the context of travel, it means that people are more likely to travel if other people are doing it. So this underscores the importance of mainstream and online media, bloggers, influencers, content creators, key opinion leaders. It shouldn't be just, you know, your brand inviting guests to travel or inspiring people with fear of missing out, FOMO, or you only live once, YOLO contents. People will travel again and will travel soon if their news feed is flooded with travel inspiration, safety validation, and social proof. Nice. Nice. Daniel? Thank you. Uh, yeah, sure. So um, I would just sum up that I, I still think uh, in this new world, parity is king. 
Um, as you were saying, cash is king. The, the same for the consumer. Um, you know, making sure that you're at the right price is going to be um, you know, even more important. I would be focusing on the, those lower funnel activities to ensure that you're actually driving bookings and make sure that you just scrutinize the, um, uh, the ROAS or the ROI that you're getting from those channel investments. Um, you know, if you can start to do that and start to ensure that you're working um, you know, as quickly and reactively as you can, um, I think you're going to be in a good position for the, um, for the, for the rebound, or at least, as you say, sort of make, um, make full use of whatever signals there are out there at the moment. I think there could be so much data that's very difficult to start to, yeah. to, to understand how awesome. that relates to your hotel. And I think yeah. you know your hotel better than, um, than anyone else out there. So, you know, it's those initiatives and engagements that really are going to drive um, that, those, uh, those KPIs for you. Okay. Great. Right. Oh, very insightful session today, Kathy. Yeah. We're so uh, yeah, honored to have our, our experts uh, join us and share their thoughts and um, in, in this field, no. So um, I guess to, to those who have, who are late in joining us, um, today's episode is entitled um, "World of Discovery: Hotel Digital Marketing Turning Lookers into Bookers." And we have with us uh, Lina Ang, uh, Sojourn, Daniel Murad of Triptees, Samuel Jean Blanc of Google, but I think he had to leave uh, for another engagement. And of course, bless the towns of Discovery Hospitality. So thank you again so much, everybody, for, for uh, taking the time out to be here with us today and to share your uh, very valuable insights on this, um, on this topic. Thank you, Kathy? Chris, Kerry, and bless you for having us. Yes. Uh, thank you, Thanks, everyone. For, for Great session. Thanks very much, guys. Hospitality. Thank you so much. All right. We'll see you again. Thank you very much. Bye -bye. To, all, to all our viewers also, thank you. Thank you for joining us. I hope you, you learned a lot. <laughs> and yes. we have another session, no? We have another episode, the last one, which will be on July 14, Fourteen. same time. Same time. Three same people. time, same channel. Facebook. <laughs> Facebook Live. Okay, so is, is that it, Kathy? Anything else that you want to you wanna say? That's about it unless uh, Blessy has a last uh, message for everybody. Um, I'd like to invite everyone to, to um, send us a message on, on Facebook on, or on IG or visit our website at discoveryhospitality.com if you'd like to book a one-on-one -on -one session with any of your discovery hospitality expert, be it revenue management, strategy, sales, even digital marketing, would you like to um, have a Zoom meeting with me, then please send us a message and we'll be happy to help. Thank you. Okay. okay, thank you so much to everybody, to the listeners out there and to all our um, valued guests. Thank you so much. And we'll see you in two weeks again. Bye everyone. Okay, bye, bye everyone. everyone. Thank you. Bye.